I've heard of microplastics before. Um, I've heard of them, like microplastics in the ocean, in the air, that it's getting into people's food, I think, or they're breathing it in. Correct. I don't know exactly where it comes from, though. Microplastics seem to be a very big problem that we are encountering. Microplastics, if I had to define it, would be kind of smaller plastics, not necessarily macroscopic, which would be something you could see with your, your naked eye, but smaller in particle size uh, that you would maybe need a little bit of help to see, either with a microscope or some other equipment. Microplastics are basically small fragments of plastics that came from larger plastic. Wow, that's a good question. Um, I would think that in my front yard, because um, then you get in the collective humans plastics, which is probably a lot. My house. In the backyard. <laughs> I think in the house. I would expect there to be more microplastics outside, like carried by the wind or the air. I think I'd have to go with outside the house. The car time because of car tires and just being exposed to the outside environment, it's gotta be more outside. In the house? Probably in the front yard. Inside my, my house. I, I assume it's about equal. Uh, yeah, yeah. My first impulse was like, oh yeah, it's all in the house, but uh, not by that much. Fabric. Fabric is a big one. Probably the clothes I'm wearing right now are made out of plastic. <laughs> um, yeah, fabric. That's my guess. No, uh, not natural fabric, like the synthetics. I read one main origin is uh, households and uh, the cleaning of laundry. It ends up in the rivers, then back into uh, the water system. They don't really go through, like, we don't, do we have, like, the filter systems to, like, no, that's the issue, right? They don't get filtered out in, like, our treatment plants, like, the water. facilities. Yeah, yeah, the water, yeah. So, the ocean's filled with them. That inevitably everything finds its way into the ecosystem, right? And, uh, um, you know, fish consume it, and you know, fish eat other fish, and other things eat those fish, including us, and they find their way right back to us, I guess. So, you might be thinking, wait a minute, microplastics are released during laundry. Some of them go through the sewage treatment plant and into the ocean. You might be asking yourself, should I be afraid of eating microplastics in filter feeder animals such as clams or oysters or mussels? Good question. Well, thanks to scientific curiosity, someone has already done a study for you. Anna Catarino and her pals in 2018 took mussels raised in the sea fairly close to a Scottish city and measured microplastics per mussel. They found if you eat 15 mussels, you're eating 50 to 60 microplastics, okay? Then, where this gets interesting is they set the table in the kitchen with a blank plate and measured all the dust that fell on that dinner plate in the time it took them to cook and eat the meal, 40 minutes in total. Then they did all the hard work to find out that in this particular house, 30% of all the dust that fell was microplastics. So, they were eating 50 to 60 plastic particles from the mussels. 114 microplastics fell on the dinner plate in the time it took them to cook and eat the meal. Now, you don't have to be a scientist to realize you don't eat mussels every day of the year, but you do set the table to have some kind of dinner and that plate, you'd, in a year, you'd be eating between 13 and 68,000 microplastics from dinner alone. So show us your, your glitter. Oh. Closer. Whoa, very sparkly. Nice. Do you like that? 
You can look at me now. Does it look good? What? Do you like it? Uh, I haven't seen my glitter. Oh, you haven't seen it? <laughs> just applied it? So I'm just seeing if screams about it. So. Hey, microcast. Okay, don't wipe it into your eyes, my love. I'm wiping it. Okay, okay. Be careful. Okay, ja, 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 ja. <laughs> Wow. Okay, stop rubbing it. It's a lot of microplastics. It is. Normal life in North America. Uh, sitting on a normal couch. Thanks, Ikea. It's uh, normally cheap. So it's probably polyester fabric and probably polyester lining, stuffing, you know, to make it fluffy. Um, I'm probably wearing normal plastic clothing. Um, so... Even this jeans, oh, there, there's a little bit of stretch to them, so that's probably some lycra or you know, spandex or something like that. Uh, but some cotton, uh, if cotton is important to you, some of your clothes are cotton, but almost always a blend. So some polyester, some cotton, you know, like socks. Um, there's always that part that, you know, holds it all together. You know, the cotton gets worn away and, and what's left is polyester, nylon, or something like that. When you have your normal kind of day, you walk into, into your normal house with, you know, shoes that have got plastic soles, you know, fake rubber, uh, and plastic uppers, and you walk across your floor, which is vinyl of some kind, uh, either uh, vinyl like in the kitchen and bathroom, or laminate flooring that, you know, made to look like it's wood, um, also vinyl. Um, maybe your floor really is wood, oh, but there's a plastic coating on it, so you can't really see. That's a plastic layer also. Uh, same with your walls. Uh, it's, it's latex, but it's plastic. Latex is a polymer, so it's plastic. How about things like, you know, pillows? And yes, probably uh, polyester. And the stuffing, yeah, for sure, polyester. Uh, blankets, also that. Things your children play with. Uh, toys, hard to find toys that are not plastic. Then you go to your kitchen and you make food and you've got plastic utensils. Cook your food and what you don't eat you store in plastic or you take it for lunch and put it in plastic. We've successfully surrounded ourselves with very durable, last forever plastic that has amazing qualities of being rigid or flexible or something that we desire for that purpose. They don't last forever. They wear away and get brittle and shatter and but those pieces have got the same sort of durability that's the creation of microplastics and and they're everywhere and inside this house we're surrounded with them that's our normal world is uh, we've surrounded ourselves with plastic and we're doing our unconscious bit to contribute to the world's microplastic burden bit by bit and we didn't even know it Indestructible. Amy, let's go. Like clip together. Poly, polyvinyl chloride flooring, right? That's the plan. Indestructible. Just, just in smaller pieces than it was previously. What a plan that is.
So what about those more difficult plastics in your house, like the surfaces you walk on, polyester carpet, or the surfaces you clean more regularly, like vinyl kitchen and bathroom floors? Replacing carpets with good old wool or cotton is very doable, and having natural fiber beneath your feet is very satisfying. Plus, you get to support your local sheep farmers, who currently have no market for their wool. You can replace vinyl floors with wood or clay, which can be coated with linseed oil or other natural oils for waterproofing. Clay is a more challenge to install, and it takes a different kind of skill. I am building with natural materials, building houses, doing renovations. We can, without too much effort, massively reduce the amount of waste, you know, pollution and impact that our building industry has on the planet. So I'm using um, various natural materials and methods that have been developed over some, some of them thousands of years uh, to replace what we think is the only option for wall materials or uh, waterproofing showers and sinks or even insulation, things like that. Uh, well, we are, our goal is actually to build a whole house without any of it. So, so we're getting close, but we're not there yet. So our walls can be completely without plastic. Uh, we have no need, we have code approved wall systems with no air barrier, no vapor barrier. Okay. Our plasters do it all. They've existed for years now. My house is the first example. Um, but addition in Wolseley, we've got a house in Toulon, another house in Toulon. Um, and we have plasters, for example, like at your place, where it, it, the, the concept of longevity is, is, is well on its way to being proven, right? Um, so we have wall systems that we can do without plastic, you know, because we have the hempcrete that we're placing, we have the base coats, we have the finished coats, we have uh, the exterior, you know, like all these things, the floor is made up of multiple coats, you know, right. so it, it all comes together. But these are very simple materials. It can be clay and sand mixed together with some fiber. Uh, it can be lime and sand mixed together with some fiber. Um, you know, adding soap to waterproof it. And the soap is reacting with the plaster, also lubricating the stone. And then you can feel it. And it gives a finish that is basically a waterproof, serviceable finish. Yeah, it's, it's actually like totally hydrophobic. Well, we took a deep dive into the world of microplastics. And isn't it funny that we came up in the swimming pool of home handyman? To be honest, Doing everything yourself is not really the solution. Really, the solution is, or a major part of the solution is, quit making all the plastic in the first place. So the reduction in global production, a production reduction, that's what we're talking about, has to be substantial and it has to be fast. Soon, PDQ. Let's get it out there. So your bit is, Identify all the plastics in your house and decide for yourself what do you want to live with and what can you live without. There's a lot of alternatives. There's a lot of great things that our parents and grandparents and great grandparents was a normal thing for them. And we have somehow forgotten all about that. Well, so get to know those things again and your life will improve.
Oh, oh you're walking your cat? Yeah. Oh, good idea. Okay. Down! 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 There's a, a great episode of um, our favorite show, Blue 